Today we will see about landmark trial in Sikkadi Mendelbohm disease. Even though in the Kediko guidelines they have mentioned based on what studies they have made those statements or suggestions was given clearly. We will see the important trials related to this topic from the historical point of view and other important studies from 2000 to 2021 also. So this is the summary slide which shows the important trials which are related to the particular topics like the trials which are related to vitamin D and along with the opioid trial and the primo trial, the trial which is related to 7MR or these three, the trial which are related to phosphate binders and mortality are these, calcium hematic related trials are these, even though I have covered only the calcium hematic in hemodialysis patient and there are few trials which have compared calcium hematic in non-hemodialysis patient also and these are the latest trials. We will see one by one. Before going into the trials here, two points about the pathophysiology in CKD MBD. In a normal state, this is in a normal state, whenever there is a normal calcium and the vitamin D, that is the active form, they bind with the respective receptor in the parathyroid gland, which result in the inhibition of the parathyroid cell cycle. And the phosphorus, whenever it gets elevated, it in induces FGF 23 secretion from the osteocyte, which binds with the FGF receptor and result in all these three result in inhibition of the parathyroid secretion. So what happens in CKD, because of the reduced renal mass, first is the accumulation of phosphate, phosphorus, which result in the elevated FGF23. And because of the low vitamin D3 and calcium, the binding with these receptors also reduces so that these two inhibitory signal is lost. And finally, even though FGF23 is elevated in CKD, because of the persistent increase in FGF23, the receptor number goes down. So this inhibitory effect also lost all these results in the secondary hyperparathyroidism. So this is the basic pathophysiology in CKD MBD. Regarding the further impact of this have been discussed in a separate video, second hyperparathyroidism. Coming to the definition, as per Kedigo statement, the definition of the CKD MBD is, it is a systemic disorder of mineral and bone metabolism due to CKD manifested by either one or the combination of the following. That is the abnormality of the biochemical parameters or abnormalities in the bone turnover, mineralization, volume, linear growth of the strength or vascular or soft tissue calcification. Whereas renal osteodystrophy, if we take, it is the alteration of the bone morphology in patient with CKD. It is the one measure of skeletal component of the systemic disorder of CKD MBD. Usually it is quantifiable by the histomorphometry. So this is the definition. Coming to the trials. Historically, this was in first in 1883, where they described about the renal records, that is the association of the albuminuria and the bone deformities. This is first where the relation between the bone and the kidney came into picture. Subsequently, in 1930, there are studies which have shown that Osteitis fibrosis cystica is present in patients who are having parathyroid hyperplasia. This was studied in an 88 patient who presented with endocrine bone disorders. Like in the study was published in the endocrine bone disorders. Subsequently, Albright, that is the Albright osteodystrophy, he postulated that CKD patient because of the phosphate retention, they will be having secondary hyperparathyroidism, which result in the bone manifestation. He described this. In 1940s, the term renal osteodystrophy was coined, but at the time it was used interchangeably with renal records. That time they have postulated the trade off hypothesis also. Trade of hypothesis is nothing but whenever there is a progressive nephron loss result in the compensatory hypertrophy of the parathyroid in response to the retained phosphate. All this results in parathyroid hypertrophy which results in simulation of osteoclastic activity and the bone abnormalities which are seen in CKD MBD. This is the trade of hypothesis of 1940. Over the next two decades, the important predominant form of renal osteodystrophy described in those times were osteoidus fibrosis of cystic and the mixed uremic osteodystrophy. During that time, there were only minimal, sorry, minimal studies which have shown that association of other bone disorder with this CKD. So subsequently, the trials will be discussed according to the topic-wise, not according to the year-wise. So far, we have discussed about the important events with respect to the years. Now onwards, we will go according to the trials which are related to a particular topic. This study was published in Kidney International in 2007. This is about the prevalence of this abnormal biochemical parameters in patients with CKD. They have studied about 1,800 patients in 153 center. As we see here, as the, this x-axis is the GFR, y-axis is the number of patients. As we see here, as the stage of as the stage of the CKD progresses as the as the stage crosses from 3 to towards 5, the biochemical parameters is there is an increased incidence of this abnormality in CKD. Next data extrapolating this abnormal parameter to the mortality. This meta-analysis was published in 2011 in JAMA, where the serum level of phosphorus, parathyroid hormone, and calcium and risk of death and cardiovascular disease in individuals with CKD. Here it says meta-analysis. They have studied about analyzed about 8,000 citations and around 3 lakh people were included in this. Directly going into the conclusion of the study, they have shown that the risk of death was high uh, with the, was higher as the phosphate level is increasing above more than 5.5. And they have shown that for every 1 mg rise in the phosphate, the risk of mortality increases by 18% based on this meta-analysis. Next about the parathyroid hormone level. This meta-analysis showed there was no evidence of association between the PTH and cardiovascular mortality. 
and regarding the calcium there was a weak association between the serum calcium and the cardiovascular risk so based on this conclusion is there is a strong association between phosphorus and the increased mortality based on this meta analysis and the calcium phosphorus and the association with the mortality is poor based on this meta analysis coming to the effect of this abnormal biochemical parameters and the trials related to this First is the trial published in the American Journal of Nephrology in 2007. This is the procreation of coronary artery calcification in pre-dialysis patient. They have studied 53 patients. Conclusion is the progression was predominant in CKD patient and correlated with phosphorus. And fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events are more frequent in CKD patient. They have just shown that CKD patient having increased coronary artery calcification and is associated with the progression and it's correlated with the phosphorus level. In detailed study, you can go through this article. Next, extrapolating these two okay there are uh, in here they have studied the same coronary and aortic calcification in patient new to dialysis they studied 129 patient but the thing was they have studied in a patient who are uh, who are about to start in dialysis they have shown that large fraction of patient new to hemodialysis had no evidence of coronary or aortic calcification during that time there are large there are many studies which have shown that coronary aortic calcification is common among dialysis patients so this study have postulated that dialysis specific mac factors might contribute to the calcific vascular disease in asrd this is the comparison of the coronary artery calcification across three studies. One is this Rousseau study, RIN trial that I will be discussing in the subsequent pages. Then is the treat to goal trial. So the presence of coronary artery calcification in patient not on dialysis, on incident dialysis, on prevalent dialysis. As we see here, the calcification is about up to 83% in the patient who is on dialysis, around 64, 51%. That means CKD patient is having increased calcification and is more as the patient going into the dialysis part. Next, the trial which extrapolated this to the mortality was published in this hypertension journal in 2001. Vascular calcification were strong predictors of cardiovascular and all cause mortality. If the calcification is there, there is increased risk of mortality. This can be easily depicted in this diagram. As the cardiac calcification increases from score to 0 to 4, higher the calcification, more is the score. The survival also decreases. They have shown that there is 75-73% risk of all cause mortality and the calcification score of 4. This is another similar trial population 2002 but they have studied in a young population the mean age was 19 and they have shown that in that study the factors associated with coronary artery calcification in patients are dose of oral calcium age and the duration of the dialysis so after this after these studies it is clear that this coronary artery calcification is present in majority of the patient with ckd and there is the evidence which is saying there's increased risk of mortality if there's a calcification and daily calcification sorry daily calcium intake is one modifiable risk factor associated with the calcification of the coronary arteries these are the three conclusion first we have seen the trials relating coronary artery calcification with the biochemical parameters then those with the mortality now going to the treatment related trials as i have shown in the another video about secondary hyperparathyroidism management the treatment goes like this first manage first weight and calcium level try to bring it towards the normal range correct vitamin d deficiency active form of vitamin d and the calcium intake finally parathyroidectomy surgical options are considered so we will the in-depth discussion of these stepwise approaches given in that video now we will see the trials only related to this first one important trial related to the vitamin d supplementation in ckd was published in hakd in 2012 this is the systemic sorry systemic review or the meta-analysis they have shown that in a ckd patient a minimum dose of 2000 international unit per day or 14 k international unit per week might be required to correct the deficient vitamin d to bring it to the normal range and during that time there are multiple studies which compare vitamin d2 versus vitamin d3 and the oral versus iv form none of them showed superiority of a particular over other so commonly vitamin d3 cholecalciferol is used and the oral form is the preferred one and between the general population and the ckd population in that time the studies have shown that result of the vitamin d trials varies for general population and this renal patient and it may be difference in the baseline serum vitamin d level vitamin d doses treatment period or the adherence to supplementation of the genetic polymorphism next coming to the trials which are related to vitamin d analog the first was published in 2003 in NECM, where survival of patient undergoing hemodialysis they compared pericalcitol and calcium triol it was not a rct it is a historic cohort study the details of the study you can go through this pericalcitol versus calcium triol was used to compare regarding the incidence of hypercalcemia phosphate change are mentioned over here you can go through it patient who received the conclusion is patient who received pericalcitol while undergoing long-term hemodialysis appear to have significant survival advantage than those who received calcitriol so they advised for further rct might be required this is about a meta-analysis about vitamin d compounds in ckd this was done between 1966 to 2007 around 60 76 trials have been included with 3500 patients almost 
and the conclusion is that vitamin D compounds do not consistently reduce PTH and the beneficial effects on patient level outcomes are unproven. The value of the vitamin D treatment for patient with kidney disease remain unknown. This is the important meta-analysis which has shown the use of vitamin D. They told there is no much benefit from the vitamin D apart from correcting the deficiency. Next other important animal trial is the OPERA trial. This is a negative trial. The effect of pericalcitol on left ventricular mass and function in CKD. This is the RCT. They studied about 30 patients. Conclusion is, even though pericalcitol had a significantly improved secondary hyperparathyroidism, improved the secondary hyperparathyroidism, it doesn't improve the LV structure and the 2D co-parameters. This is the baseline parameters in both the group. It is comparable. But uh, this pericalcitol had a better control of ALP and IPTH as shown in this graph. One important adverse event noted over here, the group who received pericalcitol is hypercalcemia. Next is the PRIMO trial. This is also similar to OPERA trial published in 2013. This is also a negative trial. This trial also compared pericalcitol. This also showed even though biochemical parameters are improved, it doesn't affect LV functional changes. You can go through the details here, how they compared the trial. So, there is no evidence of superiority of a new vitamin D analog over the established vitamin D compounds for any outcome and these agents were compared directly in our cities. And during that time, there are multiple trials which have compared this active form of vitamin D calcitriol versus placebo, other forms of the vitamin D analog that is alpha calcitriol, doxycalciferol, pericalcitol and the placebo. All have shown the biochemical parameter improved with the vitamin D analog but the mortality benefit is not there and the other important point is when they compare calcitriol with another new vitamin D analog none of them showed any superiority so as of now prescription of vitamin D analog you can prescribe any available one there is no advantage of one over the other coming to the trials which are related to the phosphate binders the first is the uh, RIND trial which is the Renajal and New Dialysis trial published in 2003 this is the effect of calcium based phosphate binder and non-calcium phosphate binder on coronary artery calcification in patient new to hemodialysis See, this is the baseline coronary artery calcification at 6 months, 12 months, and 18 months. 129 patients were studied. As we see here, the conclusion is if the patient is not having any baseline calcification, the progression towards coronary artery calcification at 6 and 18 months is very less. Suppose if they are having a baseline calcification, then the several AMR did better. The progression is less compared to the calcium containing phosphate binders where the progression is more. This is the conclusion of this study. You can go through this. Next is the treat to goal that is the TTG trial of 2002. This is also similar. Several MR admits the progression of coronary and IoT calcification hemodialysis patient. They also showed the similar results. Details in the number of patients are mentioned over here, but the summary is it also showed several MR admits the progression of the coronary artery calcification. This is a little bit different compared to those two trials. Here they have put a lipid control, the calcium acetate renal evaluation 2 trial, CAT 2 trial. They also compared between calcium and non-calcium based phosphate binders, but they have added atorvastatin to keep a LDL cholesterol level of less than 70. And they have shown that whenever this is added, the difference between the two groups was not there. The progression is almost similar in the two groups. That is the conclusion of the study. Coming to the trials related to the mortality with respect to the phosphate binders. First is the independent trial of 2012. That is the mortality kidney disease patient treated with phosphate binders and it is of RCT. Around 107 patients in the several MR group and 105 in the calcium phase phosphate binders. This study has shown that several MR provided benefit in all cause mortality and in the composite endpoint of death or dialysis inception, but not advantages in the dialysis inception. So, this is the study which showed the benefit of several MR that is the mortality benefit. Graph showing the benefit of several MR compared to the calcium based phosphate binders. Next is the meta analysis that is the effect of calcium based phosphate binders on mortality in patients with CKD. They have shown that. Non calcium based phosphate binders are associated with decreased risk of all cause mortality compared with the calcium binder in patient CKD. But they have told further studies to identify the cause of mortality and whether this differ between the two groups by what reason they told further studies might be required. Another DCO or analysis that is a comparison of several MR and calcium based phosphate binders on mortality, hospitalization, morbidity, and hemodialysis patient. This is the secondary analysis of the dialysis clinical outcome devised a randomized trial. Conclusion is in this also, several MR has a evidence for a beneficial effect on the multiple all-cause hospitalization and hospital days but that doesn't show benefit with respect to the overall mortality and cost specific mortality so after this we are having limited data to suggest that several MR 
will decrease mortality among CKD patients who are not on dialysis, but rest of the insufficient data to establish the superior adaptive of this novel non calcium binding agents. Coming to the trials related to the calcium hematic sinacalcid. First, we will see about a meta analysis sinacalcid in patients with CKD. They have studied about 18 trials with around 7.5k population with CKD. And the conclusion is that sinacalcid reduces the need for parathyroidectomy but does not improve the all cause mortality. This showed there is no mortality benefit with the sinacalcid. Regarding the, whether the non dialysis patient also included, I am not sure. You can just check in this article. This is the important studies they have analyzed optimal trial, impact trial also included. Next, other important study is the 2012 Evolve study. This is the effect of sinacalcid on cardiovascular disease in patients undergoing dialysis. This study was done in a dialysis population. This is an RCT patient, about 3.8k patients were included. Either they received sinacalcid or placebo. Regarding further detail, you can go through here. And they have shown that sinacalcid did not significantly reduce the risk of death or major cardiovascular event. So this is also a negative study. One important finding is, like the whole study was the largest trial ever conducted in the hemodialysis patient with CKD MPD with this calciumatic agent. In this, like this graph shows the no much difference between the placebo and sinacalcid over the follow period of 60 months. In the subgroup analysis, sinacalcid may provide a benefit in the older age group. It produce, provides some major cardiovascular benefits. Next is the improved CKD trial. That is the randomized trial on the effect of phosphate reduction in vascular endpoints. This is an RCT. They have the non-calcium based phosphate matter they used was lanthanum. Around 278 participants were participated. And they have shown that over a follow period of 96 weeks, <coughs> the lanthanum did not affect arterial stiffness or iotic calcification compared with placebo. This is the graph showing the difference between the pulse. Difference between the pulse wave velocity and placebo in the lanthanum group. There is no much difference between the two groups. Adverse event between the two. Going directly to the summary. This is the summary of the improved CKD trial. These findings show that they do not support the role of these interesting phosphate binders to reduce cardiovascular events in patients with CKD who have normal phosphatemia. So this is also a negative trial. Next is the episode trial. This is the optimal phosphate control related to coronary artery calcification in dialysis patient recently published in 2021. They have compared two groups and two agents like uh, patient was alerted to either sucrophoric oxy hydroxide or lanthanum carbonate and these also had two different subgroups that is strict phosphate control and the standard phosphate control strict is the 3.5 to 4.5 standard is the 5 to 6 so the conclusion is that they have shown that in simple terms i'm telling for the technical details you can go through here that if there was no difference between the two groups in with respect to the with respect to the coronary artery calcification progression but those who are having a strict phosphate control had a reduced progression of the coronary artery calcification so this was the conclusion of the study of this episode trial next is the combined trial where the effect of nicotinamide and lanthanum carbonate on serum phosphate and the fgf23 was studied this is the combined trial going directly so why like this is regarding the high serum phosphate may be modifiable to prevent serious disease in CKD as we already discussed and the short-term studies have reported a modest efficacy in phosphate and fgf reduction with industrial phosphate binders in CKD so going to the study design, 205 patients were randomized to receive either nicotinamide or the lanthanum or only nicotinamide or only lanthanum or none. This is the technical details here shown. Conclusion is the lanthanum and or this nicotinamide treatment did not significantly lower the serum phosphate or FGF over a 12 month follow period. So this is the negative trial. Although these agents appear safe, intestinal symptoms limited adherence, reduce phosphate and FGF and will require new approaches. They have told along with the already prevalent approaches, new approaches might be required. And uh, another one study which is related to ferric citrate complex in patients with advanced CKD. This agent is having dual advantage of ion correction and this phosphate uh, binding. So here they have studied about 203 patients alerted to ferric citrate complex as mentioned in the dose, dose here. This is the positive study. They have shown there is a benefit with this ferric citrate complex with respect to the biochemical and hematological parameter. This might get extrapolated to the clinical outcome. So further studies are required as they mentioned over here. So this is the group where they receive ferric citrate, hemoglobin, transferrin saturation, ferritin are better improved. And also phosphate, in fact, FGF23 are also better improved in the group which received ferric citrate. So, so far they have seen the important clinical trials done so far. First, with respect to the biochemical abnormalities in case of CKD-MBD, which, you know, how it affects the 
coronary artery calcification with respect to the mortality transmission related to the treatment we have discussed and few points about the 2017 kidigo update on the ckd mpd which was published in 2009 even though majority have remained the same there are 12 recommendations were identified these are the selective update which were added just i am showing the important one this side i have shown the 2017 revised kidigo guideline this side 2009 guideline as we see the difference is 2017 they have shown that bone morpho uh, mental density testing to assess the fracture risk if results will impact treatment decision whereas in 2009 it was this and the second important update is the bone biopsy it is reasonable to perform a bone biopsy if the if it will impact the treatment whereas in 2009 it is based on some biochemical parameters and all those as mentioned here and regarding the treatment of this should be based on the serial assessment of phosphate calcium and pts level considered together and uh, lowering of phosphate towards the normal range was suggested 2009 meeting in the normal range here they have mentioned towards the normal range so could you go after uh, about uh, 10 years they added the word towards the normal range based on studies next update always uh, if the patient is on phosphate going therapy suggested resting the calcium based phosphate binders the 2009 counterpart is the same And they have shown that not to routinely give calcitriol and the vitamin D analogs, and this have to be used only if there is a patient is having secondary hyperparathyroidism. Because as I discussed uh, with the meta-analysis, there are RCT which showed vitamin D analog failed to demonstrate improvement in the clinically relevant outcome. So that is why it is reflected in the 2017 revised guideline also. And also, patient who requiring PTS lowering therapy is suggest calcium emetic, calcitriol, or vitamin D analog, or the combination of these according to the secondary hyperparathyroidism level. This is almost the same. There was some minor change was present. That's why I didn't add anything over here. With respect to the frequency of monitoring as per Kedigo, we can remember as CKD stage three yearly, stage four six monthly, stage five every third monthly. These are the guidelines with respect to CKD MPD. This is of 2009. I have discussed almost the majority and the few which are must even go through this. With respect to the bisphosphonate and vitamin D routine vitamin D supplementation, it is not advised unless patient is having deficiency. Bisphosphonate is advised only if the it's not routinely advised only if there is a clinical strong clinical indication. Example osteoporosis, this might be indicated. And one table column to show the various guideline and the target calcium phosphorus and the PTH range. Since 2002, they are advised to maintain the normal range and uh, less than four times the upper limit of normal. The Canadian society suggested within normal, within normal, and between 500 to 500. Whereas the latest category go near normal, near normal, and two to nine times the upper limit. Suppose if 65 is the upper normal limit for a lab, we have to keep approximately till 600, less than 600. So this is an important table. Regarding the guideline with respect to the transplant, it is almost similar to the vitamin D deficiency management, is similar to pre transplant patient. With respect to the first 12 months, this transplant is secondary hyperparathyroidism management is better. I have discussed in that. Uh, Second day, I prepare a third video. If you have any doubt, you can go through it once. So, coming to the conclusion trial, so we have seen about Oprah trial and the Primo trial, both are negative trial. Next, with respect to the Sevelimer, Trick to Gold, Rin 2, and the Cat Root trial, with respect to the coronary artery calcification, they showed some benefit. And with respect to the mortality, with the phosphate binding, independent studies showed mortality benefit. DC overall study and all the metal analysis were there, which showed some variable results calcium emetic for this trial which is related to the cynical set this also a negative trial showed much no much difference and again a meta-analysis these are the important new trials improve ckd negative trial the only positive trial that uh, we have seen was that in the latest one that ferric citate complex you give there's a beneficial effect in that study so these are the important named landmark trial which has been done in ckd mbd with respect to the number of patient egfr selection you can go through the trial one by one i think i have given an outline of the ckd mbd trial in depth you can study the individual articles so if you have already have an idea about these trials you can see the video at the 2x speed so it might give you